So let's pick the brains of uh, Dr. Runga Simiu on this development. Of course, uh, will this also bring or quell the tensions that we have in Ethiopia right now? We know also there is an ongoing state of emergency that is running up to six months right now. Isn't that the case? I think we need to give them some time uh, because the politics of Ethiopia is very complex. The fact that it comes from the Roma community, Romania community, of course gives him an edge because we know the Romans are about 34, 35 percent of the Ethiopian population. And they're the ones who have been causing chaos because they believed for a very long time that they've been excluded from the central leadership of Ethiopia. But my understanding is that uh, unless something changes, actually the levers of power in Ethiopia are handled by one general, a man called Geno Samora. And for as long as Geno Samora is still alive, and things don't change in Ethiopia. That's why I'm saying we need to give them time to see how this new prime minister will actually exercise his powers over this uh, general. He's a very short man, but he's been in charge of ensuring that what happens in Ethiopia is within the accept acceptance of the Ethiopian military. And therefore, for as long as he continues to be the head of the military in Ethiopia, it might be very difficult for this young Prime Minister to exercise uh, control without being hindered by what Geno uh, Samora and his clique believe in. So I think we give them time. It could be a good move. Maybe uh, if he can exercise and manage to elbow himself, I mean elbow others who are around him and who have not been of good service to the Ethiopian country, then we can uh, hopefully say that he could change what is happening in Ethiopia. But my, my understanding is that we need to give them time we see how he's going to manage the intricacies in the leadership and governance of Ethiopia. All right. But yeah. uh, the question maybe we should ask, who is uh, Abiy in the first place? Uh, we've never heard about Abiy, or I've never. I'm not in intimately familiar with Abiy. <coughs> maybe you, you can actually give us an understanding of his background. Where does he come from? Uh, Abiy, what I know is a, is, is a scholar, is a PhD holder. Okay. He served in the military briefly. But at the age of 42, definitely doesn't have a lot of uh, experience. But I think with that background, and I think he served briefly in one of... Uh, is it Helmarium or...? Uh, no, he's, no. He's, uh, he is actually a former uh, Minister of uh, Science. Yes, and science. yes. No, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So he has that background of a bit of a ministerial position, a bit of military, and also is a scholar. So put those three together, and hopefully he can use his scholarliness to see how he can maneuver his way around the entrenched interests in the governance of Ethiopia. All right. Uh, Dr. Uh, uh, yeah, Abiy Ahmad is, uh, is uh, well, first of all, that appointment or that uh, uh, election to become Prime Minister for Ethiopia uh, signals very positive, uh, um, potentially uh, very useful uh, movement for, for, for Ethiopia to move away and break away completely from the past. It's going to take time, Simi is saying. Um, if General Samora is still going to continue with the old ways, then it's going to be very difficult for B. Ahmed to actually uh, perform or restructure or reform, and Ethiopia needs uh, thorough. Uh, 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 reforms to make sure that that country moves forward faster. Abia is pretty much a multicultural in terms of background, a son uh, of a Muslim, uh, a son, uh, you know, a Muslim father, Christian, a mother, and Oromo. Uh, uh, and so you have all these combinations, very young, educated, uh, smart, uh, uh, professional. Um, he can potentially take Ethiopia to the next level. And I think if the military is going to allow him to work and reform the country, then Ethiopia is the country to watch. Sure. Maybe with these, of, of course, swearing in, don't you think maybe it's a time maybe they, they should lift up now the, uh, the state of emergency? Well, hmm? I think that is a bit premature discussion, right? Because uh, the situation that led to the state of emergency being declared is still an evolving situation. And, the, and I, I agree with what uh, Captain Urunga was saying, that we need to give them time. Uh, what is promising about this young man uh, is that, uh, first of all, uh, he is from the region that he's from. He's from Oromia. And that is a region that has been extremely marginalized in the history of Ethiopia. They have never led the country. 
No person from a Oromo background has ever led the country since uh, Ethiopia existed as a state. So this is the first man. So this is the first man yes, yes. To, to make it. Second is his youth. He is 42 years old. That means he's very young, he's idealistic, he has uh, a lot of energy, uh, he's able to work. Um, and then he has a brief background in the military. But in the end, what will determine whether he succeeds or not is uh, how the party allow him to be able to reform the party. Because, you know, APRDF is really a coalition of many different parties. You have like five different parties that are there that are regional and that are ethnic based. Uh, but the most powerful one of them is the Tigray one, the one that from Tigray, because majority of the soldiers that overthrow the Dirk regime were Tigrayan. And these are the guys that really control the levers of state. They control the security, the intelligence, uh, the armed forces, and even up to now, uh, the economy. So it will depend on the ability of the elites from Tigray to allow this man to do his work. And I have confidence that they will. The reason why I say this is Ethiopia is a very fragile state. Very, very, very fragile because of the ethnic, the, the, the narrative of ethnic exclusion are very serious, very seriously felt in Ethiopia, in Oromia, in Amhara. And then it's a state that is also trying to be a developmental state. This is how Ethiopia sees it itself. It's trying to grow at a very high rate. I think for the last decade has been growing at 9%. It's, it's trying to attract foreign capital. Uh, it sits in a very interesting region, the Horn of Africa. It has very interesting dynamic with number of countries. Of course, all of us in the region, and of course, Egypt is, 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 is far away, but is looking deeply at what is happening internally within mm -hmm. Ethiopia. So I feel that the gray elites, if they really care about the survival of uh, Ethiopia as a, a country that has influence on this continent, they will allow these men to do reforms. And reforms are needed, especially after... Uh, 27 years mm. of uh, one party rule and especially the element of Tigray being the one ruling the state. There need to be serious reform in the military, especially at the senior leadership of the military. And I hope this man is bold enough to be able to call the bluff of the military. If some of these generals are refusing to obey his orders, well, uh, reshuffle them. Uh, he has the power to do that. And you need to act. You need to decide on those powers. And what is promising is also the, what is going on within Oromia and Amhara, where people are organizing in in massive way. They are able to come out to the street. They are able to speak their mind in a very clear way. And I hope his deputy, uh, uh, Mekanon, the, the Mekanon, uh, is able to be supportive because he has been his voice has been missing. Mm -hmm. His voice has been missing on these issues of land distribution, has been missing on all the issues that affect the Amara and Oromo, and he has been a deputy for a very long time. So I hope now, with this prime minister from Oromo and a deputy from Amara, that the two of them are able to seriously push for reform within the ruling party, within the military, and within the other organs of the state. Right. Professor Nomi Dama. Dubal um, Ahmed, uh, the 42-year-old, uh, Prime Minister gave a very good speech the other day. I listened to his entirety. He reached out to the Romo and he reached out particular to the Eritreans. And w my feeling uh, right now, maybe I will disagree a little bit with my colleagues here, is that time is what it doesn't have. The <coughs> expectation among the Romans yeah, are very high. Currently, as we are talking, there are about 1,100 people in jail without uh, trial. Uh, uh, hundreds of people have been killed. Thousands have been maimed and what have you. Uh, the country may seem to be growing at 9%, but at what cost? Where is the human right? And uh, then, so looking at the Eritreans um, continue to create problem, problem at the border and then Egypt uh, with this, um, uh, uh, you know, he must make peace with Egypt and understanding, threatening at one, one point to bomb the dam. And then the Tigray are not just going to give up easily. Uh, These guys, uh, you know, have the upper hand right now. 
and uh, and when you go strong on them and start locking people, then you are going to see people back on the street. So the best thing I can say is let's pray for him. Let's pray for him. All right. Uh, maybe I can see you actually holding a smile. <laughs> Dr. Biera Jack. No, we, also need, we, we, we prepare we, we, our closing we, we, remarks. No, we definitely need to pray for him <laughs> because Ethiopia is a big country. And also one thing that we didn't mention, Ethiopia is the chair of IGAT. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of regional concerns. So this young man, not only does he have a lot of things to carry in Ethiopia, but there's a lot going on in the region. One of them is the South Sudan peace process that is supposed to be taking place in Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. It has been suspended since Feb uh, February, partly because of the instability in Ethiopia and the dynamic in Ethiopia. We just talked moments ago about what is happening in, uh, with Al-Shabaab and all of these things. But in the end, I think the bucks now have to stop with him. He, 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 he can't think that he has some guys that he has to please, or like the deep state, like what did Trump talk about, that there's a deep state that is going to do stuff. <laughs> of course, we know that the Tigray political military elites and uh, uh, economic elites control the state. But he is the prime minister. Let him do what he has to do. And let, let him challenge those guys to directly insubordinate him, because that will highlight the deeper problem that exists within the state. And I don't think they will. They will back down. Because everybody in Ethiopia knows that their country is fragile. And all these differences, these ethnic differences, can be exploited mm -hmm. by the external enemies. And Egypt is there looking at what to exploit. Right. So they will be careful. Oh, and if he's actually checking into place right now. We know what uh, the ouster of Desaleng was. We don't know why he resigned. We don't have the details as well. Do you think the same forces maybe that frustrated Desaleng, so to speak, because you don't have the details, will also uh, just give you a free hand and a wiggle room for uh, Abiy right now? Is it you or me? <laughs> Any of you? Let's begin with uh, Dr. Runga. Okay. Okay. I, I think I understand and I want to agree with Peter. Uh, one, we know Tigrinians are... And this serves as uh, your closing remarks as well, sir. Aye, okay. Yes. <laughs> we know Tigrinians have been in power for a long time. Uh, but uh, the Amaras and the Oromias have never held power in Ethiopia. And yet they're the biggest two tribes in Ethiopia. My understanding is that we hope they'll see sense so that they don't bother this young man who is taking over as a prime minister. Let's not forget, he has mentioned that Ethiopia is a chair of IGAD. Ethiopia has the biggest population in East and Central Africa and the Horn. Ethiopia has the biggest military in East and uh, the Horn of Africa. Ethiopia has a lot of influence in South Sudan. It has a lot of influence in uh, Somaliland, the upper one. And therefore, as a country, it, it stands to disrupt so many things if things go wrong in Ethiopia, as we speak. And therefore, our prayer will be that the Prime Minister will be given space to do his work. He'll be bold enough to be strategic, to take charge of government le le levers, so that uh, as we give them time to settle down and see what he needs to do, Ethiopia will give him space to work. Because if anything goes wrong in Ethiopia, like we said before, the repercussions and ramifications in the region will be dire for us. So we wish them well, and we, we hope. Don't forget, Ethiopia has a, a military pact with Kenya since uh, held last year. So if things go wrong, we shall be called to go and assist them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's hear from yeah. Dr. Ahmed. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Ahmed, he's uh, mm. literally a very unorthodox uh, prime minister in a very orthodox country. <laughs> Interesting. Um, yes, being or from the Oromia region uh, with the fa Muslim father and a Protestant Christian uh, mother is actually something revolutionary in Ethiopia. Now, he has certain things going for him. Number one, he's new. Number two, he actually comes from the majority. When you come from the majority as a politician, there are certain things you're likely to do, even such as uh, allowing elections to actually look like elections, because you know you have a chance of winning, as opposed to having elections and you know what. Um, <laughs> the challenge, though, <laughs> The challenge, though, with him is you have structures that have been in place for so long. And for instance, the, the, the Tigrian and, 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 and other communities, especially that have been close to power, the control security services, is going to take a while. Now, while in theory, as my brother here said, he has power, he actually needs some time to consolidate that power for him to take some action, even though people who are in prisons need to be released. Mm -hmm. The state of emergency, I think, 
need to be lifted fairly soon to send a positive message to the world. Thank you. And to just opening up the political space is a process that should start like tomorrow. All right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, also, top on the agenda as we're winding up as well is the issue of uh, the Egypt and Ethiopia, you know, diplomatic row because of uh, the Renaissance Ren Dam as well. So, what will he do? Uh, we are eagerly waiting. Peter Biarajak, very briefly. Of course, the construction will continue. I don't see Ethiopia at all backing down on the construction of the dam. But what will happen is, the is a speech, as a Professor put it, is a is a man that is reaching out to everybody. Uh, and I think he will try to cool down the diplomatic tempers that has been boiling uh, between the, the Ethiopian and the Egyptians, the way that he's also trying to do the same thing with the Eritrean. But I think in the end you will see that uh, these are issues at the vital national interests of Ethiopia, and this construction will continue. It's just that there will be a bit of diplomatic language uh, between them and Egypt. Thank you.